Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the Netflix anime and I'm going to call it anime because the other options call it animation which I'm just going to short into anime in general and yes, I do understand the subtle differences. So the Netflix anime is going to do something really crazy to pioneer prices. Now. I know this because I've been studying patterns of behavior for MTG Arena. Pioneer, when it was announced, spiked much harder than Modern when it was first announced. And the cards like Supreme Verdict that was free $4 are now closing in on $20. That card was print, reprinted in Iconic Masters, right? Like it wasn't even a card that it's in great supply because it comes from RTR, the set. What's going to happen is the Netflix anime is going to bring maybe 2 million plus new players. And these new players will never, they don't care about vintage. They don't care about legacy because to them, they don't exist, right? These are not formats they can play on MTG Arena. So if you watch the Netflix anime, the first thing you're going to go to is to download the mobile game, which I'm sure there will be advertisements on to tell people that you can play this game online or it would be very easy for them to find and they can start for free. It's a free to play game. One of my accounts, I didn't put any money in and it does just as well as my account that I put money into. So then they're going to play online, and what are they going to play? They're going to play standard, maybe some historic, maybe some brawl. And I hope, I really hope that they do have Pioneer one day on MTG Arena. Again, I think they mentioned that was possible, but we will see. I mean, it's adding a lot of other sets to... Historical makes sense because they're lazy, so they don't really have to do anything too much to the code. But to do Pioneer and to do it well, they have to add so many new cards to the game. And why would they spend time adding Return to Ravnica when they can add the newest Pharaoh set, right? And it takes them roughly the same amount of time. And they can get way more money adding a new set than they can adding a set from Pioneer. And they would have to add all these sets from Pioneer as well. So we will see. But outside of that, uh, new players who are interested enough to buy the card game, maybe at Walmart or buy, invest in the physical cards to play, then they're going to realize they're all going to buy standard because they that's what they play in MTG Arena. One very interesting thing is going to happen, and every standard player experiences this. It's called rotation. Rotation will decimate your collection by 80 to 90% of its value. And that's why we always have had a eternal format. Before we had modern, we had something called extended. It's exactly what you think it sounds like. It's uh, our version of modern. But once modern came, no one played extended because there was no reason. Legacy kept on going because of the reserve list. But I would argue that Legacy Star City Games doesn't even carry it anymore. And there's no really big tournaments for it outside of some indie organizer and that's always very sketch right like if you want a tournament and you want it to be fair i would much rather have the tournament organized by star city games or channel fireball even if they charge me a lot of money because then at least i know it's fair and it's consistent and before i buy my plane ticket the event is actually going to happen i'm looking at you carmageddon which was an epic disaster brian kibler was part of so yeah, what is going to go up in price? Uh, standard and EDH. Uh, the reason I would suggest not, I mean, I would wait on EDH. EDH is a casual player's dream. Um, and obviously in MTG Arena, we have Brawl. But I could see the transition from someone who plays Brawl to EDH because of how popular EDH is in Paper Magic. The problem with EDH is next year. Uh, next year, they are reprinting everything under the sky. Uh, it looks like they're done milking the modern cow, so the Master Series is done, and they're going to milk the EDH Master Series. I mean, it, it's not like the Master Series disappeared. It's just now the focus is on the EDH playable cards, and I'm almost certain we're going to get reprinted into Oblivion 
and there's going to be definitely special editions, cartoon editions, anime. I'm, I don't know. There's going to be a bunch of silly things, products coming out next year for EDH. So, in conclusion, I, I really do believe, and my gut feeling is, the money has to go to Pioneer. There's no other outlet for the money. We can cross out Legacy. We can cross out because a new player who is a young player is never going to be able to afford Legacy to begin with. And they have, why would they be interested in Legacy when they watch Planeswalkers on TV? They want to play the Planeswalkers on TV, which Chandra is not a Legacy playable card. Garuk is not a legacy playable card. Jace, maybe Jace and Mind Sculptor, but they probably don't even need to know. I mean, there's plenty of cheaper Jaces they can go with. So, in short, Pioneer will be. If Netflix has in even a decent, decent Magic the Gathering anime, yeah, Pioneer is going to be where all the money goes. Um, Pioneer will explode in popularity, very similar to what Yu-Gi-Oh! did, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! game experience because of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. I've always wondered why, you know, every other game, even Duel Masters, Beyblade has like eight seasons of it, and that's like a little rotating blade. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! obviously, Pokemon... Digimon had a card game. Like, every card game has an anime. Oh, um, Card Fight Vanguard, of course, has one. Uh, Buddy Fight has one. Even, like, Dragon... Even card games that didn't have very big budgets. Like, it was, like, some type of Dragon Ascension that went belly under. And that had, like, a TV show, too. At least a few episodes before it went belly under. <laughs> I guess they probably should have saved their money to do something else, but... Oh, Dragonborn. Drag Dragoborn. That's what it was called. And the same with Fate Grand Order. Like, every mobile game. So, if you really are, like, an eSports mobile game, uh, Fate Grand Order has anime. Um, Madoka has an anime. Like, that's how you get people playing the game is they want to collect their favorite characters. And sometimes the characters are not even that very good or very powerful. But, nonetheless, they are... Um, favorite characters so in in my opinion it's pretty crazy but pioneer is where i'm gonna put my money into and the great thing is a lot of people quit magic here and they're selling a lot of pioneer cards i am getting a lot ton of fetch land like just a ton of fetch lands and i don't know how to prevent myself so I'm in a very awkward situation where in my brain, I'm saying, hmm, more fetch lands, better. But in my heart, I just don't want any more. I'm actually getting a text message for a dude who wants to sell me 80 fetch land right now. And I'm asking him what the fetch land look like. So I'm texting while making this video. Don't worry, I'm also not driving. So yeah, I'm going to show you my modern, uh, my pioneer collection. I think I have the biggest one. Like, I, ha I have to because that's all my area is. It's Pioneer. I'm, I'm, that's probably true for most areas, so I don't know. But I have dozens, if not hundreds, of Supreme Verdicts. Shockland, I've had plenty of them, but they've been reprinted again in the Brawl decks, obviously. It's a very good deal if you can get your hands on them at MSRP and Target at Walmart or, or Walgreens. I would suggest buying it. Uh, I would... Yeah, Pioneer. I, I would be happy. If you don't have a Pioneer collection and you're a new player, I would buy one right now before the Netflix movie comes out. I think the Netflix movie, just a bunch of new young players, male players, cis male players. I mean, I hate to say this, but that's probably the demographic. 90% um, cis male players under the age of 18 2 million of them, and they all flood the MTG arena. They like the game. Then they start buying into standard, realize, oh, standard's not a good idea because my cards become valued. Most of my cards become worthless after a year. 
let me invest in Pioneer. So now you have about six months, I, I believe, to really buy into Pioneer at the cheap. And you might be like, oh, Supreme Verdict's $18. That's not cheap. Yeah, that's true. But I'm, I'm not talking about Supreme Verdicts. I'm talking about the cards that haven't spiked yet. The other crazy part about Pioneer is you don't know, you really, really don't know um, the what cards are going to be banned or not because they have bannings like every week, which is insane, but understandable because it is a new format. And they got Oko. Oh, they didn't get Oko. They got um, Once Upon a Time. They banned Veil of Autumn. Uh, they've been really heavy on green, but green is kind of the uh, <laughs> where all my investment went. I'm going to show you how many scavenging oozes I had, which was like $2, and now they're like 8 and I cannot believe it. I'm actually going to organize my cards in a Pioneer. So like right now, my car, obviously Pioneer was a new format, so I had to reorganize my cards from Modern to Pioneer. So I have Modern Binders, but it probably is in my best interest just to make Pioneer Binders because I don't think anyone will buy Modern anymore. So, yep. Uh, off to make my Pioneer binders. I'm very, very pleased with the developments that are happening in Magic the Gathering. And I think we do want a bunch of young new players. And then, therefore, our MPL will look different. I think our MPL should be all new players who watch the Netflix anime. Oh, also, do you think Chandra will be a lesbian in the Netflix anime? Or do you think not? I don't know. Bye, guys.